Well, hello everybody, how's it going? This is Nick Sentner and I impulsively have decided to live stream Pocatello, Idaho. The time is probably noon and um, thought I'd just try this. Hey, Yax, Itzy, and Lynn Mitzi, possibly the same two people that chimed in at that first crack at this live streaming business back in mid-March. So great to see you both again. I, uh, I'm hiking uh, right now uh, high above Pocatello, Idaho. Hello, everybody from Sweden. Hey, man, I, I, I want to test a few things out for sure. I forgot Gizmo back in the apartment, and uh, so I do have a little bit of geology for you, but uh, uh, I want to say her name is Liz. I'm hiking with, uh, it's Liz, right. So Liz and I are hiking <laughs> above her hometown. We're at about uh, 5,500 feet. Let me give you a little field of view here. So there's some bedrock in these hills that uh, are pre-Cambrian in age, and I'll talk more about that in a second. Let me get, let me shoot you out the backside here. So it's basin and range geology here in Pocatello, and you're looking uh, right in the center of the frame, right there, that's Portniff Gap, where the Portniff River comes right through that ridge. And that's a significant gap for a number of reasons. Most spectacularly, that gap had the Bonneville Flood shooting through it 18,000 years ago. The Bonneville Flood, one of the biggest Ice Age floods in the Pacific Northwest. That's right, Steve. Shoot you out the backside. That a boy. So uh, I wasn't planning on doing this. I uh, I don't have any of the, the, the tripod, the, the gizmo, the Lay's potato chip tripod, all that stuff. Um, we just happened to be hiking, and uh, I just thought, oh, I wonder if I have any bars. I got four frickin' bars uh, high up above Pocatello. So I don't want this to be a two-hour program, and you probably don't either. Um, I'm interested in, in a couple of things from you. Number one, I mean, it, we're circling back to some basic things. Number one, were you notified uh, by a ding on your phone, uh, by an email? Um, I think I know the answer, but I'm just curious about these kind of impromptu live things. It's been a long time since I've done one of these where I hadn't scheduled ahead. So would you mind telling me ding on the phone or email? Or is there another way you were notified that you were joining us? Or both, I guess. Ding on your computer, phone ding, email. Yeah, thank you. iPad notified, ding on the phone. And the email flag. Yeah, those emails, the way I have it, I guess, is I always get an email with a little red dot in the subject line to tell me somebody has just started a live, and then I just click on the email. I'm usually on email, by the way. I'm still a week, a week I'm still answering emails from a week ago. Um, okay. Well, you know, I'm starting to work through these, these uh, suggestions that people have for me about how we can proceed with what we've started. And somebody says, well, why don't you do Nick on the road? And one gal, I just told Liz, uh, one gal said, how about Nick on the fly? <laughs> Nick on the fly. Let me give you another look here. Toward, I'll circle you around now without getting you too seasick. So uh, you're looking kind of to the southeast. That's Interstate 15. You might be able to see way down there in Portniff Gap. And so if you're unfamiliar with the story, Bonneville flood, 
Islands. I think one major flood, although I think I've heard from a few people there might have been a second smaller flood, but essentially it's, it's one major flood 18,000 years ago coming from Lake Bonneville uh, down in, in Utah. We overtop that uh, Lake Bonneville through a place called Red Rock Pass, not very far from here. If you're joining us right now, I'm in Pocatello, Idaho. And uh, so coming through this uh, Portniff Gap was the Bonneville Flood. I don't have anything in my head about volume or speed or anything, but I do know that there's an amazing, rather young basalt lava flow that also flowed through Portniff Gap. Now you'd think I'd be prepared and have that ready for you. I'm not. This is truly Nick on the fly. But I think it's safe to say if I remember from my graduate school days long ago that that was a quaternary basalt flow. Maybe somebody who's from the area that knows can chime in possibly. What's the age of that? I think it might even be called the Portniff lava flow or something. But the point is that lava flow is completely stripped out of Portniff Gap. So in other words, we had a lava flow, maybe if you've ever been to if you've ever been to Pocatello, there's a zoo and there's a, is it Ross Park? Ross Park uh, has a zoo on the south side of Pocatello. It's an old, it's an old city park. And there's some rock climbing there. There's a beautiful basalt flow. That's the basalt flow I'm talking about. And that flow came from a vent down by, I think Soda Springs area in Idaho. And so you've got this young basalt flow flowing to Pocatello. And then 18,000 years ago, you'll have this crazy amount of flood water, the Bonneville flood coming through. And again, I'm flipping you around that when the Bonneville flood, that water was kind of pinched and channeled through that gap, there was high velocity water that just um, easily stripped out that uh, basalt lava in the gap and then dropped a bunch of those boulders. So. Uh, all through downtown Pocatello and even into the Snake River Plain a little bit, there are these huge boulders, beautiful boulders, basalt. And I think many of them were just basically excavated out of that gap. Okay, another couple quick questions. Liz is chomping to start walking again. I don't blame her, so I promise this wouldn't be more than 15 minutes. Uh, we've been at it for eight minutes already. Another question then. Um, Seems like when I watch these in replay, I can't really get a sense of the timing of when people joined us when. So I'm real interested in, I mean, I'm kind of half looking at it at the same time here, but has anybody already looked in these first eight minutes? Like, did, was everybody here immediately? We have 230 people right now. We're, is it like a gradual build? Uh, or can I assume that when I start an impromptu live stream like this, that we're going to have, what am I trying to say? I assume when I do these impromptu, if I do these impromptu things, can I get right to it and assume that I'll have most of the audience right away? Or do I need to adjust and realize that it might be five minutes of people just gradually trickling in? I don't have a sense of that. So if you have kind of kept an eye on this one already, um, I mean, it almost might be, that even though it's an impromptu thing, I might do a, remember when I would do like 10 or 12 or 13 minutes of just kind of saying hi to folks? Would it make sense to do that with this too? So any input along those lines would be helpful. And I guess the last thing I'll say is, uh, shooting you back, that's Scout Mountain on the horizon there, a local landmark. And when you carefully look at all of the bedrock in these hills above Pocatello, we're at more than 5,500 feet elevation, so there's a whole different plant community that Liz and I are used to. But the bedrock is from Precambrian days. So if you recall, we were talking about 
the old west coast of North America being over at John Stockton's house and the Belt Super Group, do you recall that, on our supercontinent live stream that we had? Well, here we are in Pocatello, and most of this bedrock here is Precambrian. It's also the old shoreline. So there's a lot of quartzites and other Precambrian rocks from that time that have been now split into these separate basins and ranges. Uh, and, you know, as we look right here, you can see three ranges with basins in between, which was one of the topics that we decided to focus on for the Craters of the Moon live stream we did last Sunday. Okay, I think that's it. I just wanted to check in. Uh, for those of you in the United States, happy 4th of July weekend. Uh, and hope that you have a special time with many special people. Uh, we have plenty of that uh, coming tonight and tomorrow, and we had all the relatives and everybody from Liz's side of the family together last night, so it was a nice to catch up with everybody. So I think I'm signing off, even though people are still chiming in and, and joining us. Uh, mostly an experiment, uh, but uh, the first of these impromptu live streams, and I'm, I'm so glad that you found us. I miss you. Hope things are going well. I love you. Goodbye from Pocatello, Idaho, USA.